you everyone for your warm and enthusiastic re reception. The name of my report is Every Single Day in the Three Year Long Expedition of Captain Meriwether Lewis and Captain William Clark. I'm sure you will find this fascinating as well as lengthy, I mean thorough. On the first day of the famous adventure, the two young explorers woke up, washed up for breakfast, then they ate breakfast, then they washed the dishes, then they went on a canoe ride, then they cooked lunch, then they ate lunch. Their lunch was good. It was venison, berries, and potatoes. Quiet, I'm trying to give a report here. How rude, who could this be anyway? We're, We're back. back! What, what's going on here? We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Back. Back from what? Who are you? Who are we? What about Lewis and Clark? That's Clark and Lewis. We're back from the expedition. Yep, we made it to the Pacific Ocean and back in just two and a half years. We would have been here sooner, but that last hundred miles was the pit. Yeah, the traffic on the Missouri River was unbelievable. Yeah, it was. Wait a minute. Just wait a long minute here. The expedition of Lewis and Clark? That's Clark and Lewis. Don't try to confuse me here, mister. I happen to know that the expedition of Lewis and Clark, or Clark and Lewis, or whatever, took place almost 200 years ago, in the years 1804 to 1806. You can't be the Lewis and Clark. Do you think we could be the Clark and Lewis? Well, I don't see how. Well, I'm pretty sure that I'm Meriwether Lewis, the person commissioned by President Thomas Jefferson to lead the expedition. That's right he is, and I know that I'm William Clark, the other victim, I mean captain, who was asked to make the trip. And I'm Charbonneau, your clumsy guide and interpreter. At least I think I am. Am I? And I'm Sacagawea the guy for the group, and Charbonneau's wife. You are? Oh, I mean, yes. I mean, you were. I mean, you are. I mean, I do. <laughs> oh, brother. I'm certain that I'm the slave who made the trip. They call me York. I'm the dog, Scannon. Could you tell? Yep, he's a dog, all right. No doubt about it. I'm so confused. My research is to come under intense scrutiny if what you are telling me is true. Research? Yes, you see, I'm supposed to give a report to the class about the adventures of Lewis and Clark. That's... Yeah, yeah, I know, Clark and Lewis. I don't care if you're Garfunkel and Simon, my report says that you've been home since 1806. Now, why should anyone believe anything I say? Don't get upset, little girl. We'll explain the whole thing to you. Yeah, we'll give you a first-hand account of our trip. It was wonderful. It was eventful. It was eye-opening. It was rough. Let's tell all about it. Hit it, fellas.
Well, I guess that explains that. Now, York, how about you? How did it, well, well, I'm, well, I'm sh not totally convinced, but this sure is going to make him for an interesting report. <clears throat> and have we got stories to tell you? Well, since you're here, I might as well check a few of my facts. Shoot, lady. Well, don't exactly shoot. We've had enough for that for a while. That's for sure. Tell her I shot Captain was right in the rear, because you thought it was an elk, Charbonneau. Ooh, yeah. That was rough. Oh, she doesn't want to hear about that. Neither do I. Well, what I don't understand is why President Jefferson was so keen on having you do the trip in the first place. After all, <coughs> that territory wasn't even a part of the United States. Was it? No, it sure wasn't, but Jefferson had already dispatched two very capable fellows, James Monroe and Robert Livingston, to France to try to buy some land from the Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte, who was in way over his head from fighting wars all over Europe. Not that over his head was very high, but frankly, my dear, he was pretty well broke. Sounds like a good time for a deal, my dear. Look over there. We better do it. She is a god, you know. Gentlemen, all eyes, all hopes are now fixed on you. On the event of this mission depends the future destinies of this republic. No kidding, Mr. President? Gee. Heavy stuff, isn't it? Really rough. My name's Napoleon Bonaparte, and have I got a deal for you? I'm in danger of being blown apart, so I make this appeal to you. All right, the fist on you. You see, Monroe and Livingston bought a lot more than they originally intended to. Yeah, like 860,000 square miles. Sort of the blue light special of land deals. The truth is, we didn't even know America owned when we set out on our journey. I thought we were just going on a little canoe ride or something. Many Americans had some strange ideas about ownership at that time in our history. You can say that again. Well, let's get back to the trip itself. So you headed out of St. Louis in a couple of keelboats and a couple of canoes. Was the trip everything you hoped it would be? Are you kidding? It was the adventure of a lifetime! It was spectacular! It was so enlightening! What trip? It was freeing! It was magnificent! It was glorious! It was stupendous! Wait! Stop! Hold it! I can't believe me hearing this! And I'm known to have some pretty good ears! Good grief! Fellas! Give me some music! Now, baby, let me give it to you straight from the one who did the entire trip 
on four little paws and not a hydrant in sight. They can say it was a straight adventure full of romance, excitement, and thrills. But let me just tell you that no matter what they say, and no matter how they say it, the whole truth of the matter is that the whole doggone trip was positively, absolutely, undeniably rough. There were gnats and flies, ticks and fleas, a crowd of me and mosquitoes and bees, rats and worms, things to squirm, and everything else took cover with germs. Rough. No kidding, lady. Well, Scandin is right to a certain degree. It could be a pretty charming adventure. What with wild animals, miserable weather, and try to keep the native populations from doing us in. Hey, what about those native populations? What was their reaction onto you visiting their lands? You might want to ask Sacagawea. I'm pretty sure she has the best answers to those questions. Wee oui, wee, oui, she's a god, you know. And your wife? She is. Oh, she is. Wow. It's true. You never would have made it without Sacagawea and her skills as guide and interpreter. Sacagawea, how did, how did your visitors <laughs> respond to the people from the east? Oh, my friend, most of the tribes have welcomed all of us with open arms. They have shared with us their food, their homes, and their friendships. They did not feel that there was any reason to be afraid. In most instances, we are visitors in the world they had already inhabited for generations, a world they already call home.
Wow, I'm beginning to see the Native Americans in a whole new way. But my big question is, how did you know where you were going out in the wilderness? It was rough. Quiet, Scannon. It wasn't always easy, but with the help of Sacagawea and the other gods along the way, plus the stars, the sun, the planets, and the river current, the direction was usually quite obvious. Actually, it was our expert mastering of the sciences of astronomy, geography, geometry, physics, meteorology, and all of the Earth's sciences matched with our innate sense of direction, line, and form that got us to and from our manifest destination with nearly a single miscue. In other words, we just got lucky. Well, I guess that explains that. Now, York, how about you? How did it feel being so far away from home? I've always been a long ways from home, miss, but out in the west in a whole new land, I think I felt more free than I ever have. Tavavone. What was that, Charbonneau? Tavavone. It's a Shoshone word that means stranger. The truth is, I guess we're all strangers in one form or another in this strange new land. I know I'm strange. Tavavone. What a beautiful word. It's funny how sometimes, even in a crowd, a person can feel pretty alone.
just a call over home. I'm just a girl over Was there ever a time when you thought you would never cross the whole entire continent? Yes, indeed. There are times like that. Like when we thought the Sioux were going to do us all in. Or the time we nearly froze to death the, win the winter we spent with the Mandans. Or how about the time we saw 220 grizzly bears in one day? That's right. One of them almost had a sharp enough for lunch. Really? That was bad, all right, but the worst were those days we spent with the Nez Perce on the Columbia River. We ate nothing but do dog meat and salmon for weeks in. Hey! <laughs> ah, yes, the Columbia. That's when I knew for sure we were going to make it to the Pacific. After making it past the Great Falls of the Missouri, I thought I'd never want to see a rushing river ever again. We had made it across the entire continent. I mean, the entire chain of the Rocky Mountains. Needless to say, we were pretty battered. Then Captain Clark discovered a large river that we call Clearwater that led us right to the mighty Columbia. And we also met up with the Nez Perce Indians who saved our lives through their kindness and generosity. They fed us and helped us build new, dug new dugout canoes that got us back on that beautiful river, making its dash to the sea.
most beautiful sight any of us had ever seen. It was beautiful. I mean, woof. We had made it across the entire continent. The world will never be the same. Ocean and view, ocean and view. Oh, the joy, oh, the joy. fallen asleep. Hey, where did everybody go? Lewis, Clark, I mean Clark Lewis, Sacagawea, York, Charbonneau, where are you? You mean it was just a dream? It seemed so real. I guess it was too good to be true. Oh, hi, Julie, it's only you. Cassie, Cassie, you'll never believe what just happened to me. Well, I was reading my report about King Arthur and types of the Royal Roundtable. You'll never believe who came knocking at my door. King Arthur and his knights? No, that would be impossible. They've been dead for hundreds of years. Well, who then? Two guys named Clark and Lewis and a whole group just come home from a cross-country expedition. <laughs> 